But there is a solution to decrease the price of healthy organic foods and decrease the death of farmers and keep Monsanto at bay. Back in the 70s, Robert Rodale suggested that we try regenerative farming. And yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. Super awesome. This means that we try to emulate nature instead of try to dominate it. And that's like mostly what we do, right? Nature comes out and is like, hey, humans, would you like to use my soil to grow food for yourselves and evolve? And we respond with no, but we're going to take it anyway because we're awesome. And then we're like going to modify it, make it really expensive. And then we're going to like salt the earth and kill all the farmers that respect you. And, you know, you guys, you can just suck our dicks because we're humans and we're the best. And nature is like, you You are aware that I can probably kill you, right? Because I, I invented your evolution, so I can very easily undo all of that. I mean, intellectually, you guys are like halfway there, so the rest of it can't be that hard. Anyway, regenerative farming uses closed nutrient loops to enrich the soil every growing season so it can grow more in the next it uses tendencies that occur naturally on our planet so the farms would heal themselves and grow stronger after each growing season. It's literally the Wolverine of the farming world. With regenerative farming, there are no chemical runoffs in the water supply. Just all natural food that grows with the aid of other animals and natural systems and has the potential to be maintained by the proper use of automation. Examples of this is sheep and asparagus. Sheep love to graze, but they do not like the taste of asparagus. And so when the asparagus farmer has a weed problem, rather than spending a lot of money buying a chemical herbicide to spray in the field, they can invite in a sheep farmer. The sheep will clear the weeds. The sheep farmer gets free pasture for his or her animals, and the asparagus farmer gets free weed control. And the sheep add fertility to the soil. There are less labor costs to this. And as long as we don't tell the robots about how we think time is money, we should be fine. We, we do not need them to learn that shit. The other option we are exploring, albeit slowly, is vertical farming. Now, vertical farming has taken a lot of flack in the past, right? People just like, hey, you can't farm in the sky, man. There ain't, that's not where the earth is. The, the the earth is is a planet that you know what i'm not i don't want to ruin the surprise for people but vertical farming is using hydroponics climate control and lighting to grow crops stacked on top of each other instead of in fields that take up a very large amount of horizontal space now this idea isn't really going to gel right with flat earthers a lot of companies have failed due to the increase in rent in urban areas. And, and this means that gentrification isn't just affecting people of color, but also plants of color. Okay, they're trying to get all these collard greens and corn out of there so that they can get those sweet, sweet Monsanto cotton and snow peas to come into these neighborhoods. I mean, it's, it's really why they invited kale in there in the first place, right? Everybody knows that collard greens and corn leads to gang violence on green beans. Hey, this this green on green violence has gone on for long enough and and in the farming world nobody wants to talk about it okay nobody wants to address that but thanks to a san francisco company called plenty vertical farming is now being revived this idea is to produce more food at a cheaper price this can be achieved by using gravity to feed plants that are in recycled trays so there's no soil and the entire building is climate controlled and all the variances in temperature lighting uh, water distribution and so on would is controlled by a computer and it should say something that vertical farming has to be done in a climate controlled environment right it should it should tell us that the climate right now is so terrible that the only way to save the at risk food is to bubble them up and protect them from us now this can't take care of all the plants but uh, a good bit of them right kale basil mustard other greens root plants would be harder to grow with vertical farming but that's why we look at various options like regenerative farming and 
having a multitude of options is valuable. Now, tons of people would look at this idea and say, robots can't make people food, bro. But they can, and, and they will. We can talk more about automation and algorithms in a future episode, uh, but this does help solve a lot of our food problems. Vertical farming it means that it uses urban areas to make more food and deliver it right to your doorstep. Fresh. And it also takes care of the labor problem. Cost of labor are very high in organic farms, and by automating some of the processes, it decreases the amount of labor, hence decreasing the cost. And most produce, organic or not, has to sit in a truck and then a grocery aisle for a while. It's just aged and road-worn. They're exhausted. I mean, sure, they've seen the world, but now they're stuck in a crate at a Whole Foods staring at Jeff Bezos' face on a poster telling his employees to keep working for the greater good of his wallet. That's, that's the fine print of the, produ of, of the poster that, that only the produce can see, right? Human eyes aren't strong enough to see that kind of truth, you know? If produce could talk, they would warn us about the dystopia that we're about to walk into.